Hey everybody, it's Sam with uh, West Virginia Overtime, and I just want to kind of touch base with you tonight. It's the 1st of December, and it's the 1st of the week, and kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a weekend update. Uh, the rankings were announced for the girls' basketball season, and they start playing this week. Boys' basketball season starts next week, and kind of just wanted to touch base with you guys and, and kind of give you some news. Plus, I wanted to answer some questions. So that's how we're going to start tonight off is um, answering some questions. Uh, we've gotten some questions over, I would say, the last two to three weeks, probably. Uh, different people asking us different things. And I wanted to make sure that I answered them for everybody. I answered them for those people uh, right away. But I, I wanted to make sure that I answered them for everybody. So, um, one guy wrote me and said, I don't really understand what you're doing with, with this, this WV overtime. Um, his, his child, um, was a football player and I posted a article that had his child in it. And I think someone sent him the link is, is what I think happened. He contacted me on Facebook messenger and he said, um, I kind of want to know what this is, what this site is. So I kind of want to give you guys that overview. We are WV Overtime on both Instagram and Facebook. And on Twitter, we are at Overtime WV. Um, what I wanted to do is to kind of create social media site where people could go and get information on other sports or other teams, West Virginia High School and West Virginia Middle School, where they could write in, send something, and we could post it and their child could get recognition or a team could get recognition or a coach could get re recognition. So what I had envisioned was if you're in Charleston, West Virginia, and you've got a pretty decent football team, and you know that in order to win the state championship, you've got to go through Martinsburg, well, you can come to West Virginia over Tom's Facebook page or Twitter, those are the best two, and kind of go through and you can find articles about Martinsburg. You can find, you know, coaches' comments. You can find reporters' comments. You can find players' comments. Um, a lot of times, if I can find it, you'll be able to see video from their games. Or you'll get to see highlights from certain players that they've posted from Huddle. Um you will get to hear where they've committed to or where they're getting offers from. So anything that I can get statewide about the kids, about the teams, about what the coaches are doing, then we are trying to get that out there and show people not only in the state but our Alice state what is going on in the state of West Virginia. And one of the big reasons why I wanted to kind of start this was I have an uncle who lives in Florida, and he can do this himself. You know, he follows a certain team in the area, and he could go to the Charleston Gazette or the Huntington Herald Dispatch, but he doesn't because he lives in Florida, he really doesn't have connections with the team or the players. Um, he knows how to find their games, but he also wanted information on maybe that team's future opponents. And unless he wants to take a half an hour or an hour or two hours out of his time to kind of research that, he there's there was no place where everything could be. And I'm not saying that West Virginia Overtime has everything. 
uh, by no stretch of the imagination do we have everything. Uh, we're getting more and more as more and more people find out about us. Bear with us. We are only two and a half months old. Um, we haven't even broke a thousand page likes yet on um, Facebook. And I th I think we just broke 500 uh, page likes on Twitter. So, um, you know, we were small and we're trying to get as much information as we possibly can. Um, a, another person wrote in about three weeks ago and said, why does it seem like you follow certain teams more than others? Well, I wanted to make sure that I answered that question. It's because certain teams or the student sections or um, I have made contact with certain reporters in areas or the um, local sp news, um, whether it be on TV or newspaper reporters or whatever, cover teams better. So I'm going to give you a for instance. Parkerburg South has been excellent. Um, they have been absolutely awesome. Those kids um, write us, whether it's they tweet us, whether it's they message us, they shoot us emails, um, they DM us on Instagram. Those kids make sure that we know when they're doing something. That's the reason why if you go to WV Overtime's Facebook page right now, you will see a list of their activities for this week because they sent it to us. You know, they've got a wrestling match. They've got a boys basketball scrimmage. They've got girls basketball games starting this week. Um, they have the times. They have who they're playing. They have, you know, where it's taking place. And after, like, the wrestling match this week, what one of those kids will do, or the coach, or a teacher, or even the athletic director or a principal or something like that, a lot of times they will shoot us something privately and say, hey, we won the wrestling match against so-and-so, here's the score, you know, here's who won, here's what they did, um, here was the out outstanding athlete of, of the night. Um, a lot of you saw throughout the football season, Wyoming East, we, we had, you know, what their offense did, how many tackles their defense did, what their special teams did, and then we had their player of the week. It's because somebody sent it to us, or we were able to get it. It was posted, you know, in the paper. So we're trying to cover as many papers as we can and as many TV stations as we can, and then we're also trying to follow and cover the social media sites that are developing. So that brings me to the next question. One said, it seems like you copy a lot of articles or uh, posts or other things from other people. Well, yes, I do. Um, one of the reasons is because I can't be everywhere in the state. And especially since basketball season is getting ready to come on. I'm actually coaching basketball season this year. So there's going to be nights that my team is playing and there's no way that if we're playing, you know, in the Southern part of the state that I can be up in Willing watching Willing Park play. So that's one of the things we don't specialize in a team. Uh, we're trying to cover as many teams and as many kids as we can. So when you see us post an article, we always try to credit who wrote that article, what paper it came from. Uh, there are two YouTube videos. You guys need to check them out on the site today. Uh, WV Sports News, West Virginia Sports News is an excellent social media site that is trying to get kids in West Virginia to get recruited. They're putting out as many videos, they're covering as many games, they're they're doing highlights, they're they're putting together packages. They're trying to to get our kids as much coverage as they can. Well, they interviewed two basketball players and, you know, we posted that to our site. We want these kids 
to get as much coverage as possible. Um, Jack Withrow from um, South Charleston, who covered South Charleston football, he is cover- covering St. Albans basketball, going to be covering Taste Valley Christian basketball. He, li- I believe it was last week, went on Facebook Live and showed Taste Valley Christian's game against a nationally ranked op- opponent. Well, we linked you to that. What we're trying to do is kind of be one place where you can come and get a lot of different stuff. You're going to see, um, as you saw during football season, we covered Brandon Lowe's show, um, High School Blitz. Um, We are also covering his uh, podcast on Jock Talk. Um, We're going to be posting the um, podcast from basketball Friday night in West Virginia. That's going to be every Friday night from uh, 9 p.m. to midnight, every Friday night, covering basketball all over the state of West Virginia. It's three hours of nothing but information of uh, coaches' interviews, of players' interviews. They do an excellent job. We don't want to get in an area where someone already has that field. We want to cover the holes and kind of make our site a one-stop shopping ground where you can look and say, oh, gee, we play um, Beckley next week. Let's go on West Virginia overtime and go back for the last week or two and see how their basketball team's done. And you can find articles. You can find where, you know, the student section has sent stuff in, where, you know, players have sent stuff in. Now, uh, the next question that I got was, where are your advertisers? Uh, I've got, uh, can I be an advertiser? I have gotten, why don't you have advertisers? I have gotten all kinds of messages about advertising. Um, I'm going to be very honest with you, as I have been with anybody that has wrote that in. Um, right now, West Virginia Overtime is not advertising. Um, I don't know where I stand on that issue. Um, and here's why. Um, and I know I'm saying um a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know whether or not I want to take on advertisers yet because, number one, I don't know if we're big enough. I'm not sure what numbers I need. Number two, I don't know that I want to. Um, with me being a coach and being around the kids, I don't know that I necessarily want to make money off of high school athletes. Um, number three, I'm not sure if I take on advertisers, um, if that will be that I need to start putting out my own content other than just podcasts. I did not do a lot of predictions during football season because I didn't feel like I knew those teams uh, well enough in week one to make predictions that would have been based on last year or based on whether or not I liked coaches. And so I I didn't make a lot of predictions. You may hear me make some predictions in some games in basketball. I feel more knowledgeable in that area. But you know, I'm, I'm not really into predicting games and predicting scores of games. I kind of let everybody else do that. And so taking on advertisers, I kind of wonder what their expectations would be. So right now, um, we do not have any advertising. Right now, we are not taking on any advertising. If you want to advertise with our site, Yes, you feel free to write me. We will, you know, put it in a file. And if we decide to do that at a certain time, then, you know, I'll look you up. But right now, we're not doing that. Um, you know, we, we've got the Facebook page, the Instagram page. We've got a Twitter site. 
we've got the podcast. Um, I have a YouTube page. We haven't put anything up there yet, and we're in the process of developing a website right now. If you go to www.wvovertime.com, we have a scoreboard set up through a score stream, but we don't have um, anything else up on there yet. So that's kind of where West Virginia Overtime is, what we're doing, and, and what our vision is. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to email us, uh, like I said, at wvovertime dot, or, um, at gmail.com. Um, tweet us at Overtime WV or hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at WV Overtime. So let's kind of get into the update. If you guys go on um, West Virginia Overtime, I think I put it on all of our social media sites, um, the update on Brandon Penn, Parkersburg South quarterback and defensive back who got hurt in the game against Martinsburg on Saturday in the semifinals football game. He broke his back in two places. He is in a Martinsburg hospital. He had surgery this morning, and it is my understanding that he had a successful surgery, and they are respecting, expecting him to recover fairly well and that he you know should be back playing football soon and be able to have a full recovery so if we hear anything else we will be sure to give you guys an update in case some of you have uh, been with your family or are unaware the state championship games are now set they will be happening friday night and saturday up at uh willing island Martinsburg will be taking on Cabell Midland. Bridgeport will be taking on Bluefield in the double A game. And in the single A game, Doddridge County will be taking on Willing Central. Now, my um, view for this week is we're going to do a podcast later and it's probably going to be Wednesday or Thursday when it goes out and we're going to kind of give you the latest updates on these games. Um, I kind of wanted to let everything settle especially today and let the football teams assess any injuries, uh, figure out what was going on, let the players and coaches, you know, practice some and figure out what they're going to be doing. And then we'll come back to you guys with a podcast talking about these six games. Um, so just wanted to make sure that you guys are following that. Also, uh, Today, girls' basketball rankings come out. Top 10 in each class in triple A, in double A, and single A. They're really, I don't think, were any big surprises. Um, I'm going to give you the top five for triple A was the defending champions, um, Parkersburg. Then second was Greenbrier East. Third was University. Fourth was Willing Park, and fifth was George Washington. Um, there are not any big, big um, games this week. Most people are uh, opening up in their area or they're opening up in their conference. There aren't any huge games where, you know, number one is taken on number 10 or, or something like that. We're going to keep you up to date on that. The game that I do want to watch, though, in AAA is Morgantown. Uh, Morgantown is ranked number 10, and they are going to be going to Shady Side, Ohio. Shady Side, Ohio. I was I was doing some research on them earlier. They are already three and zero. Ohio started a play before we did, and Shady Side, Ohio is three and zero. They are averaging sixty six points a game, and Morgantown is going to face them December fourth at seven thirty in Shady Side. So we we definitely want to watch that game, kind of see. 
I think that'll give us an outlook on how Morgantown looks um, and where they're going to be going with the ball and as far as where they stand defensively. If, you know, Shady Side can keep their 66 points a game going or whether Morgantown defensively kind of lower side and, and can shut them down. In double A, we've got uh, one is Fairmont Senior. Two is the defending champions, North Marion. Three is Lincoln High School. Four is Wayne. And five is Wyoming East. Like I said, um, no real big surprises here. I, I did think that Wayne and Wyoming East may have been, you know, third and fourth. I thought Lincoln would be fifth, and I thought North Marion might be number one. But Fairmont Senior can can hold their own, and so, you know, that's a pretty good ranking. I look for Double A to be strong this year, and, you know, with Bluefield, Winfield, and um, Sissonville making some runs at it, I think, you know, Double A is going to be really, really strong this year. Now, Single A, I'm going to give you the top five in those, is Huntington St. Joe's, Parkersburg Catholic, then Willing Central, the defending state champions, are coming in third. Summers County's fourth. And then Williamstown is fifth. And um, like I said, there's no big games in double A or single A. Now, um, some teams are opening up tomorrow. Uh, Taze Valley Christian School and Cross Lanes Christian School are playing tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, Taze Valley Christian... Uh, hollered at us earlier today and said, hey, don't forget about our game tomorrow night. So they are opening up tomorrow night. I want to make sure that we uh, tell you guys about basketball Friday night in West Virginia. I mentioned them earlier. They are going to be broadcasting 9 p.m. to midnight on Friday nights. It's going to be a three-hour show. Uh, If none of you have heard it before, feel free to go on any podcast player, you know, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can go on Stitcher, Spotify, whatever. Put in Basketball Friday Night in West Virginia. They have their own podcast. You can go back and listen to anything on last season. They interview coaches. They give you updates on big games. They go through stats. They go through their rankings. Um, Every once in a while, they they talk to players. They are very knowledgeable about what is going on in the state of West Virginia as far as basketball. Um, They cover both boys and girls, and so you can get a lot of information from them. If you don't want to stay up to midnight, like I said, go to a podcatcher and or a podcast player and listen to the podcast the next day or, you know, on Sunday on your way to church and your way home from church or, you know, when you're on your way to work or, or whatever. Feel free to make sure that you guys do that. I also want to make sure that you guys are aware that the SSAC has put it out. If you go to... Um, wvssac.org it is on their website um they are encouraging all sports to use max preps that's m-a-x p-r-e-p-s max preps as to enter their schedules in to enter their scores their stats um, they're encouraging them to put video up. They're encouraging them to take pictures and put those up. So feel free to look on Max Preps. We're going to be posting a lot of their stuff from their site during the basketball season. They are going to be doing rankings two times a week. They're going to come out on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um the teams have to play three games before they get a ranking. So, you know, the rankings obviously will not be out next Tuesday. Uh, from talking to Max Prep, they're hoping that they have enough teams that have played three games in girls basketball by next Friday 
to actually get those out. So um, I guess that'd be Friday the 13th. Um, and we will we'll link to those so you guys can be looking at those rankings. Those rankings will be different than the sports writers rankings that we posted today. Um, Max Preps rankings are based on strength of schedule, based on scores, and then any quality wins that you have against another highly ranked opponent. They have an uh, algorithm and you can get on there and look at that and see what all they base it on. But they do not have people actually voting on it. Their ratings are not based on what you did last year or who your coach is or, you know, how many fans you have or a fan vote or anything like that. It's strictly based on your strength of schedule. Uh, your scores, and then if you have any quality wins. Now, if you get on their site and you click on the Excellent 25, the Excellent 25 is different than their regular rankings. The Excellent 25 is going to be writer-based. Okay, let me say that again. The Excellent 25 is going to be writer based whereas their actual computer rankings are based on a formula that their computer actually does um so for instance they have been doing this in football and martinsburg is ranked 221st in the nation in football and then they're ranked number one in west virginia and they're ranked number one in triple a so the rankings are are based on a computer but the excellent 25 those are actually based on um the writers you're going to be able to go in there and if you click on your team you can see where they are ranked nationally where they're ranked in the state and then where they're ranked in triple a or double a or single a so like i said we're going to kind of keep track of that and and be posting that um one of the other things that wv overtime tries to do and i think some of you have noticed that with our podcast have noticed that you know especially on our facebook page with us posting quotes uh posting banners from coaches all around the the country and from national social media websites and stuff is we are trying to help parents people in the community and coaches get better have a better understanding of what a lot of people are trying to do with these young players how to build a team how to build a program what they're going to be doing and so that's one of the things that i want to make sure that west virginia overtime stays focused on is that we are always giving you information to become you know a better community person to become a better parent to become a better coach in the sports world uh one thing that i truly believe is that leaders are learners and you'll hear me say that if you come to any of our games i say that to our players um you'll hear me say that throughout hopefully a long career here at west virginia overtime but i truly believe that leaders are learners and so that's the reason why we put out podcasts such as you know the how to build a team how to build a program podcast that we just put out and then other things um such as the five shooting myths that we put out we were we are going to continue to do that we're just not going to be an update podcast we want to make sure that you guys are are getting quotes or getting articles or getting websites that will make you expand your knowledge either of a team or of a sport and how that goes um so i just kind of want to make 
sure that you guys understand that. So, kind of continuing down that path, I want to talk a little bit about confidence as right before we wrap up here. Since girls' basketball season is starting this week and middle school basketball for both boys and girls is starting this week, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about confidence because a lot of people believe that you can give a person confidence. Well, it's not something like a, a drink or an apple or a book or, you know, anything that you can physically give something. Confidence kind of comes from within. Um, I think that confidence, you have confidence when you feel like you have some level of achievement or some level of mastery of a skill. You know, um, I know how to type. Um, I do not type very fast. I, I type probably, I don't know, 40 to 45 words a minute. But I have confidence in myself that I can type. Now, can I hang out with the fastest typers in the world? No. I don't have that type of confidence. That comes from within. I have the confidence that I can throw a football. But can I throw the the football the way Tom Brady does or Aaron Rodgers. No. That's the thing. Confidence comes from within. You can't give somebody confidence. Um, It's almost like the lack of fear of failing leads to confidence. If I think that I can throw a football 10 yards well I don't have the fear that I'm going to fail at that so that is confidence now do I think I can throw it 100 yards no so I have that fear fear of failing if someone says here's a football throw it 100 yards well in my head I know I'm going to fail. I don't have any confidence in that because I have that fear of failure. So that's the thing that we want to see parents, people in the community, and coaches kind of take away from people. That fear of failure. Kids will stretch themselves. Players will stretch themselves. If they don't have a fear of failure, one of the things that I've tried to teach our middle school team this year is that mistakes are how you learn. Let me say that again, because I know some parents are are listening to this. Mistakes are how you learn. Think about that. When you were learning to drive, and you put your foot down too hard on the gas pedal, and it gunned. You got that jolt. Well, that's a mistake. Your parents probably went, ah, and said, don't do that. Well, you made a mistake. But by doing that, you learned. You learned, hey, don't gun the car. Hey, I don't want to you know, have me or my passengers being jerked around by, you know, slamming my foot on the gas. You learned, hey, if if I press down this much, it keeps the car at a steady place. So that's the thing is mistakes are how you learn. And by making a mistake and correcting that mistake and learning, then you slowly build up this confidence and you slowly take away the fear of failing so that's one of the things that i i want people to kind of understand that it's not so much that it should be about a finite number meaning the score it should be about what they learn 
the outcome is borderline irrelevant in the game of sports. And I know a lot of you are saying, yeah, you won't believe that on Wednesday night when your team takes on the other team. You're going to want to win. Well, yeah, I am. I'm going to want to win. I'm going to want our players to want to win. I want our players to come out, you know, ahead on the scoreboard. But really, in the big scheme of things, the outcome of this game is irrelevant. And I know some of you are thinking, what do you mean? Well, think about it. It's one game that we're going to play out of 20. We can lose one game. We can lose two games. You know, we can still be in the running. It's okay. The outcome of this particular game is irrelevant. It's about did they learn and what did they learn? Did they learn the correct things? Then when you pull out even more to a bigger picture than that, is did they learn techniques? Did they learn character building? Um, did they learn, you know, how to do certain things overall in a season or overall in a year? Because think about it. What do sports teach you? You know, all the different things as far as coordination, um, how to deal with conflict, how to problem solve, how to build your character, how to deal with teammates, how to deal with authority figures like referees or coaches, you know, how to deal uh, with other parents or your own parents, how to deal with social media, um, learning how to juggle the responsibility of going to school, doing your homework, but also going to practice, um, learning how to behave in public, learning how to behave on a bus, learning how to talk to people when you're upset, learning how to deal with failure in your life, whether it be losing or because you didn't make a shot or, or, or whatever, learning about how you have to develop skills at a certain level in order to gain playing time or to gain a starting position or to be a captain on a team. There are so much that sports can teach you that will help you in your life. So when you look at it as you're building skills or you're building attributes that they're going to use for the rest of their life, does the outcome of Wednesday night matter? Yeah, I meant to pause. Does the outcome of a game, a middle school game, on Wednesday night, does it matter? No. It matters what they have learned, how they have become better players, but even more better people. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, we're going to get back after it later on this week. And uh, like I said, we're going to keep you informed of what's happening in girls high school basketball this week. If we get any knowledge of what's happened in any of the boys basketball scrimmages, we will pass it on. We're going to give you any updates that we can get on what's going on with the six football teams that are vying for the state football championship. And we're going to try to keep you updated updated on any sports that we possibly can. I hope you guys have a good week and I will be talking to you soon.